Um, good morning, everybody. Great, great to be part of B-Sides London again. I was lucky enough to be part of it last year and a great day, so. Um, just to introduce myself, I think probably most of you in the audience probably know me, I think, but uh, I've been at Aberty University for quite a length of time, over 21 years, uh, taught various different things, and I developed the BSc in Ethical Hacking at Aberty in 2006. We think it's the first undergraduate degree in the world with the word hacking in the title. We're pretty confident. But. Um, this is essentially the story behind um, the, the, the first uh, degree in ethical hacking. I'm going to have to do this extremely quickly. The usual university lecturer, I'm completely disorganized with my slides, so I've got far too many slides. Uh, I want to go through the, uh, where the idea came from, the early days, um, what the ethical hacking degrees become, and then just some random thoughts at the end. So how did this all come about? It's quite a number of people have accused us of being a pen testing degree, so um, I want to just mention exactly where my idea came from. A wee back in 2005, I was involved in a, a knowledge transfer partnership uh, project with NCR, RMD and Dundee. Um, NCR are the largest manufacturers of, of uh, ATMs in the world. Um, at the time, we were doing a risk analysis. Uh, so essentially, we were looking at all the possible risks to an ATM, not just electronic, we were looking at physical, insider threats, all the different types of threats. Um, it occurred to me that we were not really thinking like what you think of security specialists. We were thinking like um, uh, hackers. Uh, so it certainly occurred to me that the only way you can really defend is if you can think deviously, um, then you'll be able to uh, defend better. So that's really where the idea came from, not pen testing. I looked down uh, around at other degrees and uh, it was quite easy to find the, the syllabus of uh, other degrees and they all seem to mention the mitigations. So they were all mentioning IDSs and IPSs and firewalls and all these different things, but um, they, they weren't really mentioning things like SQL injection or cross-site scripting or the things they were defending against. So my idea was let's uh, put forward the uh, degree where the graduates think like hackers. Uh, to begin with, it's, it's difficult, it was difficult to begin with because there was nothing for me to plagiarise. Not that academics will ever plagiarise, but there was no other degree out there. So it's very difficult you know, to work out exactly what, what we were going to uh, put forward as some kind of formula for the uh, degree. Um, but NCR were a great help. Uh, they were essentially after someone who could programme or network in and knew about security. So that, that's the kind of themes that we put in. Um, we had a lot of support from other companies. Unfortunately, it, other companies don't want anyone to know that they're involved with Aberté uh, because obviously it shows that they've got, they've got problems. The program validation panel included the head of school at Northumbria as well, uh, and Northumbria subsequently became the second university to offer an ethical hacking degree. As I say, academics don't plagiarise. They noticed a really good idea. Um, being totally truthful, the course was not exactly the way that I thought of uh, to begin with. Uh, we had to go through an internal validation procedure, which meant that I, I had to justify my course to um, psychologists. And psychologists immediately think, well, it's called ethical hacking. You should have eight modules in ethics. Uh, and then I had to justify it to lawyers, and they wanted eight mo modules in law. So um, I would have left about two modules in something technical. So it was, it was quite difficult uh, getting through it, but it's, it's taken some years. One thing about hacking that interests the media um, I became a bit of a pop star for a little while on television and radio when uh, everybody wanted, wanted their, their slice. That picture at the top there is uh, me just before I appeared live on French television, and it's the only picture I know of me in makeup. Um, hopefully, none of the other ones have been put on, on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Newspapers had a field day. Um, the Sun newspaper called me Dr. Hacker, so it's. When the sun or any tabloid gives you a title, then it's a very proud moment. So There was also a, a lot of resistance. I kind of uh, anticipated a lot of resistance, but um, some of the resistance were, was really scathing. Uh, some academics um, commented, that, this is on the Higher Education uh, Academy Forum, that it would be a catastrophe for a university. And the person that actually said this was an external examiner at Aberté in computing. So... Quite bizarre. 226 students in six years we've had at Aberté. Uh, Cross-programme names. You probably noticed there's lots of ethical hacking degrees appearing, so 
Um, I don't think too many people are agreeing with that. And the bottom one, I doubt it would look good to prospective employers, was something I had to wait four years to disprove. Uh, but our graduates are cur currently working for these companies. So um, KPMG, PricewaterhouseCooper, First Base Sigital, fairly big names there. We find that it's quite the reverse. The, na the name has been a, a good advertising point for our students. Even the establishment had a go. This is a BCS white paper um, that was produced, uh, I think it was against Northumbria as well as ourselves. Uh, if penetration testing is what being taught, well, I mean, there's a simple answer to that. It's not penetration testing. And a lot of people tend to think we are just doing penetration testing and calling it ethical hacking, but definitely not. Uh, the, the next one is about marketing spin. Well, unfortunately, every university in the UK now uh, is a business, and we're quite entitled, in my, my opinion, to use marketing spin as well. And the part about professional image, I think the image will improve if we do our job properly and there's not so many data breaches, then I think our image will improve. Um, the bottom one, ethical hacking should not be considered as a professional term. Well, too late. Um, ethical hacking has been used since the 1970s. Um, um, I think it was developed by IBM in the 70s, so it's a bit too late for that. I think that, uh, that BCS white paper, I think, was written by a single individual. Um, and I stole this slide from this single individual who says that ethical hacking is not um, a, va a valid title. If you look way up here someplace, uh, penetration testing is way up there. And this person has called this the language of security. Perhaps we should have called it the degree the language of security, because this slide mentions intrusion detection, prevention, uh, protocols, hacking, encryption, information security, professionalism, mentions virtually everything, legislation and regulations. I think if we add, add a bit of physical uh, security, social engineering, education, then essentially we'll come up with what I think the, the degree Aberte is all about. It's about essentially total security, not just computer security, everything around about it. I mean, as, as we all know, the human being is the weakest link. Uh, so to me, social engineering, all the rest of it comes into it as well. And after that white paper being produced, our, uh, our degree was validated in 2010. You can only validate a degree by, with the BCS when you have graduates. So that was the earliest possible opportunity. And it was probably the easiest validation I've been involved in. <coughs> the early days, um, entry procedures were, were uh, quite difficult. Again, as I said, we, 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 I had nothing to plagiarize. Uh, so we tried to mirror medical degrees by interviewing people, and we put in some ethical scenarios, which was quite uh, interesting, um, hearing the responses. The problem about giving someone an ethical scenario and say, what would you do in this case? There are a thousand different answers, and personally, I didn't know which one was the right answer and which one wasn't the right answer. So since then, we've really forgotten all about the ethical scenarios and just, uh, just kind of got on with it, really. Um, we interview, uh, really looking for enthusiasm, I would say. Uh, we also do this disclosure check, and we make uh, anyone coming on the course sign on the dotted line. Legal issues are paramount uh, to it. Who's suitable for ethical hacking? I've, I've, I've had uh, some conversations with security guys about who do you think is suitable, and somebody said uh, one of your questions in the interview, interview should be, uh, at what age did you first electrocute yourself? And if the age was before 10, then we'll accept you onto the ethical hacking course. If after 10, then you're not suitable. I think I would go one step further than that. I think ethical hackers should, should really think outside the box. And rather than just electrocute themselves, I think they should electrocute themselves in a u unique and, and, and novel way. And that, to me, is the kind of student that does really well, that they think totally out, outside the box. Cohort zero. Um, there's, I think there's only one person who was in cohort zero. Mr. Phoenix down here was in cohort zero. A, a s extremely unusual cohort. Um, they could certainly electrocute themselves easily. In, in totally and utterly unique ways. A great cohort, they thought outside the box. I'm not sure what planet the box was on, but they, they thought outside the box. Um, we started off with 16, 16 different students. Um, just some kind of figures about them. It shows that it was a bit unusual. We had two students over 50 in our, our first cohort. Having one student over 50 is quite unusual, but with two. We had one student aged 16 as well, so quite, a, quite an age range. With two female students, but unfortunately, that's about the best ratio we've, we've had. Uh, considering that one of these female students was the best student I've had in 22 years, uh, the most obvious first-class honours. Uh, 
Only four of them completed the honours degree, but three of them went on and, and, and did other things as well. Uh, they, they were certainly volatile. They, they trolled me day and night. Um, to be perfectly honest, some of it was valid, some of it wasn't valid, but anyway, it was an interesting experience. Uh, something unusual happened. At this, by this point, there was, there was two of us uh, lecturing uh, in ethical hacking, my colleague uh, Natalie Cool, um, and we suddenly had a, a pregnancy rash. There was babies galore, six babies. I, I think in 22 years, I, I can only remember one student having a baby, and there was six within 18 months. Um, so we, we kind of did some more lectures on firewalls. Um, and we, we tightened up the firewall rules, and it seems to have um, had the de desired effect. Taking a little sidestep, um, um, some of you may have no full disclosure mailing list. Um, there has been a, an alleged troll. I'll, I, I'm going to try and use the word alleged all the way through. Um, all the way back from 2002, I don't know if any of you have had any instances of uh, playing with this, this, this troll, but... Um, he was so famous, and he's been around such a long time, so famous that people were making T-shirts with his name uh, and, and some of his quotes on it. He he'd, um, announced that he was leaving. Um, so this was his quote, September 1st, 2006. He was moving into professional scene, and he mentioned he was going into an academic lifestyle, which gives you a clue as to where this person went. Everybody obviously waved him goodbye with a hearty cheer. Uh, not... Um, so looking at the timeline, he went missing then, and our degree started round about then. And he went back to full disclosure round about January 5th, 2007, and one of our students didn't return in January. He was obviously welcomed back. Um, to say this, this was the type of language that <laughs> this was the type of language that everybody re really spoke back and forward to him. Kind of leads to some serious questions. I've had, had this asked to me before. Fair enough, you had a troll who really isn't, isn't dangerous and probably has the right, the right ideas on, on, on defence. But what happens if, if, if we had hacking group members? Number one, difficult to identify. Um, they obviously want to stay anonymous, so it would be difficult to identify. But I would assume that somebody like that would want to try and recruit the best students into their group. And I'm quite confident that 99.9% .9 of our students are there for the right reasons. And I'm sure that they would take great delight in being the person that outed, you know, somebody. So uh, every university reserves the right to remove students anyway. Uh, my attitude is we need to educate anyway about hacking techniques. So would we stop a degree because we had some, you know, illegal person on it? It's kind of like the same question. Do we stop medical degrees because of Harold Chipman? Of course we don't. So something else that, I've, that, that came to my mind about that first cohort, a lot of them had brilliant mindsets but not really suitable for degrees. They didn't really enjoy Database 101, you know, boring subjects. They can't do them, but ethical hacking, they, they loved it, and they got really stuck into it. So it's a question that I don't have a really, a really have an answer, that uh, how do we make, effectively make use of these people? Because some, them, some of them have made it, some of them, some of them haven't. What's become? The students are still pretty volatile. Uh, uh, ethical hacking students are unlike any other students. They do like complain, uh, to complain about things. New facilities, we, we moved into new facilities in September 2010, so we've got a brand spanking new lab with eight speakers in the, in the ceiling. Sounds amazing, absolutely fantastic. Um, but the new lab is around about 60-odd PCs that's um, it's for use for uh, ethical hacking students only. So a really, really good environment. For those of, uh, those of you that are thinking about this, I'm briefly going to mention, this is the three themes that we look at, programming, networking, and ethical hacking. Year one and two... Uh, is very much the basics. In Scotland, it's a, a four-year honours uh, degree, by the way. And year three and four is much more research. <coughs> One thing that students said a lot, Colin, you should be teaching us this. Um, and I turned this totally around on them and said, right, you want to learn that, you learn it. Uh, so right the way through the degree, we've got a culture of project work, either small projects or larger ones. And some of them guided, for example, in their uh, year three ethical hacking, a web security project where the students have their chance to learn and write a paper on something that they think is uh, what they should be learning. Okay? So we're, we're trying to turn it around. Um, it really is what a degree is all about anyway, you know, learning how to learn. So uh, it has 
proved really successful, being honest. Um, I've developed a, a new edu bubble word, uh, student-centered hacking, uh, which is really what, what it's all about, that we want the students to mold their own, their own careers. Okay, they've got a degree, but we want them to decide whether they want to do web application uh, hacking or penetration testing or programming or whatever. So we'll, we'll put the pressure on them. What do we teach in the, the ethical hacking modules? This is, uh, this is currently what I, what I teach, these, these, these types of things. Um, so general security, obviously, penetration testing. Uh, there are two members of the staff went on a pen testing course with First Base Techies. So that really has supported that, that area of teaching. Uh, exploit development, I, was, uh, I went on the exploit lab last year at uh, Hacking the Box in Amsterdam, run by uh, Somo and SK. Brilliant course. And uh, has given me kind of what ten weeks worth of teaching material, real good, good solid stuff. And um, we've also had three members of staff that have done the certified ethical hacker. Not a qualification that I really think is a very good qualification. However, uh, the material you get with it is excellent, so it's a, it's a good good starting point. And also the work with other companies. In my opinion, if you're going to offer an ethical hacking degree, staff training, company involvement is essential. We've got a number of guest speakers from from NCR come in and, and other places. Just some random ramblings at the end. I think the, uh, the culture of project work has, uh, has uh, resulted in something that I didn't really expect, and that's students talking at conferences. And I mentioned the names here, Nick Walker and Vernon L talked at BrewCon. Ellen Moore was at BrewCon and, and B-Sides London last year as well. Phoenix down here, uh, when he was a student, talked at uh, two or three conferences. And uh, Gavin, Gavin Ewan's the, the latest student. Uh, so it's it resulted in these guys getting out there and making a name for themselves, which is fantastic, which is really what it's all about. Final questions. Are there jobs? We're a vocational university, so to me the degree wouldn't be a success if these guys weren't getting jobs. Uh, and I mentioned the, the, these companies that our graduates are now working for. Uh, we had three guys came from NGS uh, last October to interview our owners, your students. So three of them came up, interviewed nine of our students, and five of them have made the final cut. I'm not sure how many will be offered jobs, but I've never heard this before, that a company will come to the university you know, um, to tr try and grab our students. Quinetic, interested as well. Three, they, they took three summer students last year. Um, an interesting one, PwC took two of our students in January, two of our honours year students in January, uh, offered them so much money and a, a, a future, basically. Uh, that they, they couldn't turn it down. So our students are not even getting to graduate before people are coming in and taking them. So I think it shows that we're doing, doing something right. Uh, current, current grads are out there, uh, and the current owners here are easily getting jobs. So one of my owner students had, had been offered jobs by two different companies uh, and possibly a couple of others. Something that's been accused, uh, I've been accused of, is a, a sensationalistic title. Well, to me, the whole thing, security from start to finish, is, is, is important. Uh, so um, ethical hacking is what I think we're doing. You know? it's, uh, I mentioned before that it's not just about computer security. It's about the whole thing and a mindset. So that's what we're doing. So I think, as far as I'm concerned, that's the name that we'll use. Future, the guys are out there. And in my opinion, because our graduates are out there and getting good jobs, then it has been a, uh, a success. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, go ahead, Steve. Um, what kind of jobs? What, what are people actually going... What are uh, actually there's, doing? A, there's certainly a couple of people doing pen testing with PwC. Right. Uh, NGS, I think it's pen testing jobs as well. There is one student who's going into software security, uh, and someone else is interested in web application um, development and security as well. So uh, I think currently the pen testing companies are coming towards us, but... Many of the students don't want to be pen testers. I think year one they start off saying, I want to be a pen tester. Um, but my opinion is we're trying to equip them, equip them for anything, network management as well. We, we, we offer CCNA alongside our degree as well, so people want to get into networking. Anybody else? Go at the back. Uh, I don't see the point why you, you, you are using the material from the Certified Ethical Hacking course because, you know, I, I remember reading the book like five years ago just for fun. 
yeah. and there were questions like on w which part the back orifice is listening, uh, Correct. stuff like that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's very basic stuff. Oh, of course. But it's a good background for my colleagues. I, d I, don't, use, I don't use the CEH material for my, for my labs. I mean, the, the, the practicals that we do are, are uh, much more thinking. You know, if we, if we do practical using Nmap, then it's all about what's happening underneath the scenes and obviously how to use Nmap as well. But we're, we're, we're not using the CEH material. But I think it's a good background for someone who, who's, you know, trying to uh, get into teaching ethical hacking. Phoenix. What would you change? What would I change? Um, I would like a little bit more law in the, in, in the, the course, a little bit more. Um, the course is constantly evolving, though. You know, every year you think we can do this and do that and do that, and it all depends on members of staff. We now have a, a, a member of staff who's uh, a digital forensics expert, so I can see us doing a little bit more digital forensics. We do very little at the moment, so, yeah, probably that. Ethics, yeah, we do a bit of ethics in there, in there as well. That, that it's one of these things, the BCS makes sure that ethics is in there, but a degree in ethical hacking, you have to have some ethics, you know, as well as a, a fair bit of law. Yep. Uh, how much do you think the, the degree depends on you? Um, if, do you think any academic could set up such a course, or does it take a...? a I think it takes somebody that's really enthusiastic, and I... I I'm, I'm number one, certainly enthusiastic, but um, I can't really comment on other, other universities, obviously. But I, but I think it takes a, an academic, you know, with a bit of drive to do this. It's not easy teaching ethical hacking. You know, there are so many different subject areas. It's, it's really quite difficult. I find it pretty hard. I, um, I did uh, a bit of a ethical hacking degree at Northumbria University, um, okay. and it was uh, it was brilliant. No, it wasn't. But um, there was uh, such a high turnover of students yeah. within the degree. Um, have you seen the same thing at Dundee? And if so, why? Initially, we did see a real high tur turnover. I think people doing an ethical hacking degree tend to think it's a training course rather than a degree. I mean, any degree is generic and broad-based. So they d most students, um, or, or a lot of them, come on the course thinking, I should be hacking all day, rather than sitting programming and you know, doing law and doing databases 101. I make it pretty clear. We, we interview all students before uh, they come on the course, and I make it pretty clear this is a broad-based degree. But I think some of them still come on thinking it's training. And when it's not training, then they walk. But it's difficult doing that. Aberty offers uh, computer games courses as well. And we've got the same problem, that the, the people on these courses think they're going to sit and play games all day. Um, and then suddenly they're doing mathematics and 3D modelling and, wow. So that, that's probably the reason why. Tom? Hey, um, so I was wondering whether or not all of, there's a lot of universities now in the UK that do ethical hacking or some form of yeah. computer security course. Yeah. As like the head lecturers or whatever you guys call yourself, um, what do you either get together, discuss like what could be done to improve, or you know, basically for I guess the better of the students, right? To to make the courses better. You're right. We probably should do that. So I'll probably agree with that. Yeah. Um, I've I've talked to a few people, but nothing nothing formal. Um, but yeah, that sounds a good idea. Yeah. Hi, um, obviously you've got a lot of the professionals, sort of the big four and whatnot. Do they give you a lot of feedback as to how to improve the course, or do they put requests in as to what they would like to see from the next year's crop Well, of we students? haven't as yet. I mean, I've got a few um, friends on Facebook, you know, from, from all these companies, and uh, they've interviewed the students, and they really haven't said anything bad about the students. Um, but you're right, I should really get some feedback and see if I can put that back into the course, yeah. And do they offer you sort of, um, I, I want of a better word, celebrity lecturers to just come in and give your students a talk about they, what they're saying um, in the field? They have. Certain companies have said that they would uh, send people up, and they haven't as yet. Uh, actually, one has. NGS has. NGS has sent somebody up. But we do have guest lecture days where guys like Pete Wood from First Base has been at Aberty two or three times. Uh, hi, um, 
do you have much sort of postgraduate development from your students? They go on to do something else academic. Um, we, we have uh, a few different MSCs. We have an MSC in ethical hacking that I would say is not really suitable, you know, for uh, degrees in ethical hacking. I think there's too much, you know, similarity. Um, being honest, I've, I've, I'm, not, I'm not sure where our, uh, our undergrads would go, you know, once they've got their degree. There's a few people who have done other things. They've, they've gone to Glasgow and done uh, network security there. All well, depends on their interests. One, one guy has actually done a, an information security, which is more a kind of terrorist, cyber terrorist kind of angle as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we see a lot of hacking these days, which is, um, it's got a, a part to do with, with electronics as well as computing. Yeah. Um, I, I'm just wondering how you, um, uh, you bring that into the to degree for people who are perhaps have a mindset of computer science. Mm, I wouldn't say we do a, an awful lot of that. Uh, we, we, we do some module, one, there's one module in second year called Smart Programming where we're, we're looking at electronics in there. I can't, I'm, I'm not sure of the details. One of my students is sitting here who's just doing the module, he might be able to yeah. inform you. Yeah, cheers for dropping me in it. Yeah. Um, Go no. on. Um, <laughs> I'm doing a, my smart programming project's uh, RFID spoofing, where oh. we've built a RFID emulator to emulate the data on a tag. And that's very much, you know, you get your hands on a solder and iron and you've got to build circuits and stuff. So um, the question was, uh, do we get to do a bit, a bit of hardware hacking? And the answer is yes. But that's more project work, isn't it? So yeah. students can choose from a, a, a range of different things. Okay. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys.